Secretary. I would remind members again that if they wish to ask any supplementary question, they should raise continually in their places. The member who has tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister for the Economy to outline her plans to support small businesses and their responsibilities as employers as a response to COVID-19. I call the Minister. Can I say thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank you uh, for the member for raising this very, very important issue um, at a critical time uh, for Northern Ireland. Um, first of all, we should make no mistake about this at all. This is uh, an economic crisis as well as a health crisis for all of our communities. Um, it is no coincidence that governments across Europe are launching emergency fiscal stimulus packages with the aim of limiting the economic damage that is accumulating. And I am fighting to mitigate against the worst effects of this crisis on the Northern Ireland economy, on our small businesses, and in particular, on our tourism sector. Assessments by the OECD and the Governor of the Bank of England suggest um, major disruption to the economy with short-term growth projections slashed. For what uh, we've seen so far, it looks more and more likely that the modest growth projected here for this year will be wiped out, if not worse. My department has been working hard to understand the economic and business consequences of the crisis, and I have now shared those economic sectoral assessments with executive colleagues and with the Economy Committee. I have done that just this morning. What is crystal clear is that businesses in the travel, tourism and hospitality industries have been hit first and are being hit hard with an alarming drop-off in all sorts of economic activity. The Northern Ireland tourism and hospitality sector employs 65,000 people and generates approximately one billion per annum into the Northern Ireland economy. The coronavirus outbreak comes at the end of the quietest period in the tourism calendar, on the back of the period of uncertainty relating to EU exit, the collapse of Fly B, which has significantly decreased regional air connectivity. Businesses rely on spring summer season to build reserves and they're therefore facing into this crisis without the level of reserves that are needed. To help everyone appreciate the extent of the crisis, I will give you an insight um, into what is occurring. Hotels and restaurants are seeing a sharp fall in occupancy levels. Booking.com forward bookings are down 80%. Titanic Belfast is experiencing a 50% drop in visitor numbers <coughs> compared with this time last year. The first nine days of March show a 40% drop from this time last year. And I've no doubt that uh, over the um, last number of days that this may well have increased. The industry estimates that there are around 3,000 tourism businesses um, that uh, might not uh, survive uh, uh, on the, in the long term um, without um, immediate help within the sector. One of our large tourist attractions has indicated that they would only be able to continue for 10 weeks without revenue if maintaining core staff on full salary. Wage bill is around 40% of costs and that is the same whether the business is large or small, so wages are a significant um, element of the cost. As the St. Patrick's Day parades uh, have been cancelled indeed across Northern Ireland, perhaps it's worth reflecting that the Belfast parade alone is worth about 1.3 million to the local economy. Airline travel has uh, been slashed with reduced demand affecting airports and firms curtailing business travel. Um, Fly B has impacted on about 200 local jobs and has had uh, knock-on effects for workers at uh, the city airport. Retail is also beginning to feel the pinch, with footfall down around 6% in Belfast city centre, 
and around 7% in Northern Ireland so far this year, compared to the same period last year. I have highlighted to you the results of my department's analysis and uh, to executive colleagues. And it is clear that the emerging issues are cross-cutting and require an urgent response. This executive needs to work collectively to help businesses and our people through this crisis and ensure that we safeguard employment. Everyone is seized of the need to act quickly, but this should not just be about the here and now. We will absolutely need a Northern Ireland stimulus package. For starters, a number of the key measures announced in the budget are England-only measures that we need to take action to the extent uh, of Northern Ireland. And the first step is for the executive to ring-fence the incoming Barnet consequential so that the funds that are being allocated uh, across the United Kingdom and the consequential in relation to coronavirus is ring-fenced and used to mitigate uh, the impact of the coronavirus on the economy, on health and on different sectors across Northern Ireland. I will not stand by and let Northern Ireland businesses be left behind. Second, I think that we need uh, to move faster and further. So I have also written to the executive asking that we put together the fiscal firepower for an enhanced stimulus package to enable us to deliver what is available across the United Kingdom and to deal with the specific issues that will emerge locally. Thank you. I look forward to your questions. Call Claire Sugden for a supplement. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, Minister, I anticipate significant cash flow issues, particularly for businesses who, um, who are in the service industries and the retail industries, particularly over these coming months. Um, would the Minister support um, a suspension of non-domestic rates for businesses of a certain size um, and perhaps use the opportunity of the money ring-fenced in, 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 as a response to COVID-19 um, so that we can maybe try and get businesses over the worst effects of this uh, virus? Thank you uh, for your question. I think it is indeed uh, very valuable. Before I answer to the specific of the question, um, can I say that um, just um, before I came into the chamber, I have been meeting uh, with uh, representatives of the banking sector in Northern Ireland. Um, and it is clear that cash flow will be a major uh, problem for um, not just small but medium-sized businesses um, throughout Northern Ireland, many particularly in the hospitality and tourism sector, rely on, on immediate uh, cash coming in in order to meet the demands either of the investments that they have made or for staff purposes. So they indeed do recognise um, that cash flow is uh, an important issue. And I have urged them to be flexible in their dealing with um, um, customers um, and indeed those customers that they have uh, are, uh, a long-term relationship uh, with them. Um, many of the, the banks were keen to stress that, um, that there is uh, plenty of liquidity in the system and therefore they are keen to offer um, flexibility to customers and some are al already undertaking a large programme of outreach to individual customers. So it is, is important that the message goes out from this chamber that if there are immediate cash flow issues that you do get in touch with your bank and that you talk to them uh, quite quickly uh, in relation uh, to that. However, um, cash flow and borrowing or even uh, deferral won't um, in the long run either offer us the immediate cover for the immediate period or for a recovery period. And that is why I think that the executive needs to look at something more. Um, this morning we did discuss the issue of rates and I understand that the finance minister is going to bring forward some proposals around that. Um, however, I would urge that that proposal is as far reaching as we can make it because rates make up a substantial um, bill that customers uh, are that uh, businesses have to face and particularly at this time of year. 
Um, and that should not um, just be a deferral of the payment, but that we should look at how we can help businesses in a very practical way in relation to their rates. Oh, Jonathan Buckley. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for the seriousness in which she is dealing with this uh, issue? Uh, we know the widespread impact that it will have on our economy. So it's strong that we, have a, uh, that we have a devolved government that is dealing with this issue in a coherent way. We heard at the weekend, Minister, that uh, the British government is engaging with industry uh, in, a, in, a, to, to, in an attempt to try and find uh, additional ventilators which will be needed to deal with this crisis. Has the Minister engaged with industry locally to see if we can diversify some towards providing the ventilators that will be needed? Um, yes. I, I, one of the things that never fails to amaze me is the um, ingenuity and ability to adapt of our businesses uh, here in Northern Ireland. And in fact, there has been uh, some specific contact between my uh, department and firms here in Northern Ireland who would wish uh, to contribute um, in this particular way. However, I think that, um, that that is one of the issues, but there are other issues that we will need to deal with uh, for firms. Um, and those will be around, um, I think, that the measures that we will need to take around um, the coronavirus uh, business interruption loan scheme, uh, which has been announced by uh, UK government, how we would want to make that uh, business friendly for Northern Ireland, so that whether uh, you are conducting a business in Bristol, Belfast, Birmingham or Glasgow or wherever, that you can avail of the programmes that are available at a UK level. Um, we need to look at uh, the refund of statutory sick pay for SMEs, uh, uh, the small business grant scheme, um, and of course, obviously, uh, the interest rate uh, reduction uh, in the base rate um, will um, have some impact. Although, interestingly, again, talking to the banks today, many customers are on fixed term uh, interest rates, so therefore it will only apply to a smaller proportion or percentage of those customers because they've been on a, a fixed term rate. So there are uh, significant interventions that we need to consider. Um, my plea is that we consider them um, as quickly as possible. I have sent um, correspondence to um, the committee. Um, and I know that the Chair will progress this uh, as quickly as she can. And I think that working together, we need to tackle what is a very serious crisis for the economy in Northern Ireland, and in particular in our tourism and hospitality sectors. Iram Sir, Kiva Archibald, for your case, I call Kiva Archibald. And I, I thank the Minister for her, for her answer, um, which she's outlined has been very stark and unfortunately doesn't come as much as a, a surprise because I've been speaking to representative organisations and people over the weekend and there's real concern out there. Some have already taken decisions to close, difficult decisions for them and their employees and likely over the next number of weeks we're going to see more of that. So I was wondering if I could ask the, the Minister if she'll sleep, seek to clarify that insurance providers will pay out on insurance for employers who have to close but still pay, pay their workers. Thank you. Um, it is um, an interesting uh, question um, because there is the issue of the extent to which employers are insured um, and that is a very big issue in Northern Ireland uh, without going into the statistics uh, around it. Um, the issue about uh, whether uh, businesses should close or not, I think in all of these things, we should not be guided um, by what somebody says, but we should be guided by the science, by what our chief medical officer is recommending, and follow um, the very basic um, things that we can all do personally and in our businesses and in our contact life um, to, have, uh, to, to limit uh, the impact of the virus um, on ourselves, our families, uh, and on our communities and businesses. Um, thank you. Adam Sir, Sinead McLaughlin, for your case. I call Sinead McLaughlin. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for your answers uh, so far. Um, this 
this is a major crisis uh, and it's combining the health and the economic crisis together. But I'm really concerned. Some businesses have no choice. They have to close because uh, uh, you know, nobody's actually going into their business uh, and their social distancing and, and it's happening as we speak. But does the Minister agree that uh, we need to urgently set up systems to provide financial assistance to those workers, including zero hour uh, workers uh, and the self-employed who are losing income uh, because of this self-isolation and self-distancing um, and are, are, as a result they're being laid off? Um, again, can I thank you for your question. Um, over the weekend, I was talking to um, not just the tourism industry, but um, hospitality, Ulster and, and, and various members. Um, and I commend them for the actions that they have taken so far. Um, they um, have voluntarily introduced um, issues around social distancing. Um, many of them are very worried about the impact um, on their business. Many of those businesses are small businesses. And as uh, the previous member outlined, cash flow is a huge problem for those businesses. So I do commend them for the work and the actions that they've taken so far and urge them to follow the advice uh, from the public health agency in all of these things. We should follow the science um, and not what we think uh, is possible. In relation to our, our staff and our workers, and of course, this is a, an issue that isn't just about business, it's not just about making money, it is about families. Um, I have been looking into to some of, of the issues um, around uh, what, what will happen. And um, as I say, um, Last week, the Chancellor announced a five billion worth of support for smaller businesses threatened with possible collapse um, because of cash flow problems or absent staff, including a government rebate for the first 14 days, um, accounting for about 94 uh, pounds uh, a week of statutory sick pay. So I think that, that um, there, there is some action uh, around that. Statutory sick pay will also be made available to all those required to self-isolate, even if they're not displaying symptoms, uh, without the requirement to obtain a sick note from the doctor. Um, and uh, for those uh, who are employed um, on, um, are self-employed or employed on, in the gig economy, there is a 500 million boost to the benefit system which will include a temporary halt to the minimum floor in universal credit and quicker payments for employment and support allowance claimants. Um, and the Chancellor um, that is clear that we do need a safety net for people. Can I also say, I was also talking um, to um, the tourism sector and hospitality Ulster, and I think it's something that my department will quickly look at. Um, if we are in a position where firms have to close and where businesses have to close, some of those people we will need to relocate into other areas of the economy. So many of these people will have skills um, in food preparation or, or, or whatever the skills are that we may need in our hospitals and so on as uh, this uh, thing uh, reaches a, a peak. So we will be looking at that and how we can set up platforms to look at how we can relocate and uh, people so that if, if one business closes that there are temporary opportunities in other areas of the economy and I think that that would be an important thing uh, for us to get on ahead with uh, as quickly as possible. And we did have some discussion in the executive this morning about how exactly we could do this and we need to uh, try and make it uh, as quickly as possible. Call Andrew Muir. Thank you very much. Mr Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her statement. Uh, this needs to be a collective effort to, in response to this, because it's a, also uh, a public health emergency and an economic crisis. And bickering in this chamber on Twitter is not going to serve businesses any good. We need to come together and we need to deliver in relation to this. That's not, no, we're not covering this place in any glory at all but what we've seen today. And my question for the Minister is, is that in response to the measures you've outlined, when will you be bringing those forward? And also, will that include measures to ensure that businesses who are struggling with cash flow, and they're struggling with cash flow today, 
In that situation, how can we ensure that staff are not made redundant and that we can keep those employees on so when we get through this crisis, those employees can be re-engaged and those businesses can get back to work? Because redundancy should be the last option. We should be keeping staff on. Can I say I absolutely agree with the member. Um, I think that our communities deserve clear um, collective advice from the executive and I regret entirely um, that this has not been the case. For our part and our party's part, we will continue to follow the advice of the Chief Medical Officer. We will put our faith in those who have spent a lifetime in protecting the safety of the public um, in Northern Ireland uh, and who know and understand how these situations escalate and the appropriate steps that are to, take, are to be taken. So you will not find um, a distancing um, on my part uh, from the scientific advice and from the advice of the Chief Medical Officer and his heroic efforts to keep us safe in this emerging crisis. And I regret very much that others took the opportunity uh, to distance themselves from that advice um, over the weekend. And that is regrettable. Um, and there's not to the benefit of Northern Ireland and the people that we seek to serve. And I made that perfectly clear at the executive this morning. I'm not saying anything in this chamber that I haven't said uh, in other form that is available to me. And I think that that is very important. It is important that we try to avoid redundancy, that we try to keep staff as, as, soon as, as, as long as possible. Those are individual businesses for individual companies. But I want us as an executive to have a Northern Ireland package to address Northern Ireland issues so that people and families, communities, do not suffer unnecessarily. I call Robbie Butler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the Minister for taking the time to come here and speak on this important issue. And you'll recognise that the, it has been covered already by a number of members that the High Street is under immense pressure, uh, irrespective of the further pressures through the coronavirus. And we are in that intervention stage, and the pressures are there. Has the Minister given any thought to a package that may be available to um, businesses? on the other side who may have had to close down due to financial pressures who are indicating to all of us I'm sure almost on a daily basis that if they have to close the door they may not open again. I think regrettably that that may be the situation for some businesses but we will try to put together a package which mitigates against the worst of the economic impacts of the crisis that we are now facing. Particularly, um, and I've been giving some thought to this, um, we um, are facing a situation in hospitality and tourism where after a very quiet winter period um, they're facing into a very uncertain period over the next number uh, of uh, weeks and months um, and therefore we have to be ready with a recovery package and whether that is for tourism getting out there you know with uh, new better um, tourism messages and helping people to understand that Northern Ireland is open for business and wanting to um, welcome them to their shores just to, as an aside and for information for the chamber I was in uh, New York last week and in Washington and um, I met a number of companies who are already investing and uh, opening up job opportunities in Northern Ireland. I met other companies who, because of the quality and calibre of the workforce and the young people who are coming into the workforce in Northern Ireland, are on their journey of investing in Northern Ireland and creating jobs in Northern Ireland. Um, and I look forward to not just um, having a stimulus package to help us over the worst of the crisis, but also looking forward uh, to helping Northern Ireland get more and better jobs as we move into the future. Call Claire Bailey. Deputy Speaker, um, and thank you for the Minister um, and for being here today and your statement. Um, and just maybe before I ask the question, I'd like to point out that the £94 statutory sick pay rate uh, wouldn't actually cover the majority of workers' rent for the week. But that aside, um, 
I know that you're taking the long-term view, and, and that's good, and following the evidence, and that's good. A lot of the scientific evidence is really trying to encourage us uh, to, socially, so, to practice social distancing, and particularly for the hospitality trade, what we're seeing at the minute in my constituency um, is not long-term. It is right now. It is here. And tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. And we know that every single year in South Belfast, we have thousands and thousands of people who travel to the Holy Lands to party on the streets and in the houses. And many of the, our bars have taken it upon themselves to close in the area, but many others haven't. And many of the off licenses Would haven't. The so I'm wondering, question, is there any please. advice that Excuse the minister me? can give to businesses in the area to maybe try and stop putting our emergency services under such pressure tomorrow? Can I thank uh, the member for a question? Um, I am, of course, aware uh, of the cost of rents vis-a-vis uh, -vis statutory sick pay. Um, I, too, live in the real world. Um, can I also say, and I, I know this is something that the member has worked on, um, on a num and has worked on consistently, I would urge um, both restraint um, and responsibility um, tomorrow as uh, we celebrate St. Patrick's Day, although in a more muted fashion um, than we would normally do. In my opening statement, I acknowledged that uh, the St. Patrick's Day parade and the ongoing events uh, bring about 1.3 million to the wider Belfast economy. That's a very important contribution to the economy. However, there has been long-standing problems uh, within the Holy Lands area um, of some of these celebrations getting out of control. Today and tomorrow, more than ever, people need to think of the wider good and to think of the communities around them and to understand that um, they are putting themselves and their families and their friends at risk um, and um, they need um, to have some element of social responsibility to the wider community. And I would urge that, and I commend those um, um, businesses who have taken measures um, in relation to this. These are not easy decisions to take, um, but I would urge some responsibility from the community in this uh, time. Well, Jim Allister. Deputy Speaker, can I take the Minister back to the um, supplementary that Ms Sugden asked her on the rates issue? Uh, the Chancellor has announced a package uh, which will effectively, for many small businesses, give total relief in the upcoming period. And there is a, a Barnet consequential of some significant proportion that works through. The Minister, in her reply, said to Ms Sugden that we need to take action that will be as far-reaching as we can make it. Will she commit to lobbying the Finance Minister within the Executive that there should be 100% relief, such as is being afforded in GB. Can I thank the member uh, for his question? Uh, and of course, uh, the issue of this will be addressed uh, by the finance minister, and the decision on it will eventually be taken by the executive. For my part, it is important, as the minister responsible for the economy, as the minister responsible for the promotion of small businesses and for the care of those businesses within the community, that we see action that is as far-reaching as we can possibly go. I personally would like to see that being a rate um, um, relief uh, for the full term for those businesses. But I am not in... in uh, receipt of all of the figures and information for that, um, and I will allow the Minister his place uh, in dealing with it, of course. But can I say that simply pushing back the term that you pay the rates uh, or deferral uh, for a short period of time will not be enough uh, for some small businesses, and we will need to look at how we look at this in the round. So it will be about rates relief, it will be about loans, it will be about flexibility from the banks, and this executive needs to put together that total package um, that is important to the economy going forward. Quick question, Irem Sir, Jerry Carroll, Little.
Deputy Speaker, I welcome the Minister's support for a stimulus package. She referenced an economic and financial crisis. Does she recognise that workers and vulnerable people were penalised in the last financial crisis? Does she agree that no worker should be financially worse off, private or public, in this crisis? And does she also support measures such as mortgage and rent suspensions that were introduced in Italy? Um, can I uh, thank the member for his question? I, of course, recognise that many people, including small businesses, um, were uh, impacted very gravely in the last um, financial crisis. And one of the questions that I actually asked the banks today was about the, the issue around their liquidity and their ability to support small businesses and families as we face into an uncertain period of months. That is extremely important. I am reassured uh, by their answer that they certainly are operating in a time of greater flexibility, with greater liquidity and a better uh, ability to support uh, small businesses. Supporting small businesses means that we support families and communities, and I am absolutely uh, concerned about that as well. That concludes this item of business, and now we move to Mr Andrew Muir, who has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Finance. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, as before, they should rise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically.